What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster back here on this uh, Monday night. It is uh, February 27th, 2023. It's about 10.01 p.m. here along the West Coast in the state of California, where it's been relatively cool and rainy off and on all day today. Got more rain coming in tomorrow. Uh, take a look here at the latest earthquake activity shows a 3.3 North Island or just up north of the North Island, New Zealand area, about 211 kilometers deep. We have been seeing some earthquake activity ramping up down there, uh, although uh, it did show up on the globe here last night. It disappeared throughout the day uh, today, and I'm not for sure why. Um, so kind of puzzled on that aspect as to why those quakes disappeared, but uh all right, uh, let's go ahead and jump into it here real quick with the latest map here from the USGS. Uh, we'll get to New Zealand here in just a second. Got some uh, earthquake activity ramping up here into the Chile area. Pretty good cluster of movement centered around this area of the Peru Chile Trench. Quite a few fours kicking up here. And these are all over the place in the depth department. That means uh, something brewing up here. Might want to watch this uh, subduction zone right around the Chile area with all this movement taking place. Uh, a look at the EMSC model globe here uh, confirms all that activity. Also some newer movement down here south inland uh, with a 4.9 and a 3.2. Uh, looks like inland inside the, or at least in the Argentina area. So we'll continue to watch that region pretty closely. Also the Middle America Trench here still seeing some movement with some twos. Uh, and that 5.3 coming in here just off the coast of the Nicaragua area. That one coming in earlier this morning, about 1040 or so. And also some smaller quakes being uh, noted across the area. Uh, into the states here, Texas really ramping up uh, with earthquake activity. Around Pecos, Texas, eastward here around the Midland area. Uh, there's quite a few oil fields out here, as you can see listed on the map. I don't know if we can squeeze any more in out there, but uh, quite a few earthquakes popping up out there in the uh, oil fields, and uh, it's oil fields galore. That is a certain. And uh, every single one of these rectangle type boxes are a um, oil well. Also got some wastewater disposal wells out here as well. Those are uh, uh, wastewater disposal ponds. Quite a bit of activity out there ongoing. And uh, whenever we see this earthquake activity kind of ramp up inland around these oil fields, uh, that means stress out here along the North American continent. Uh, so uh, continue to watch certain areas. Uh, we haven't really seen a major increase out here along the West Coast, but I wouldn't doubt it uh, with this continued movement inland uh, that we see a little bit further activity into the California region. Uh, one earthquake, well, a couple earthquakes out in Oklahoma today as well. 2.1 down into the New Madrid seismic zone from earlier today. And looking into the Pacific Northwest, a um, little spotty earthquake activity. I was just checking Yellowstone here. It doesn't look like we see, uh, uh, we're seeing anything up there in Wyoming. I just wanted to cover that before I forget about it. Really no earthquakes out there to talk about there in the uh, Wyoming area. Clear as can be for now. Uh, a little spotty activity across the Mount St. Helens area. Very small microquakes. And Oregon looks clear for now. Northern California about the same. Uh, on that note, we'll check out the tremor map for the uh, Cascadia subduction zone, which consists of, uh, well, only 13 epicenters of tremor along the southern end of the Cascadia. Uh, now, I did know this morning we did see a little bit of earthquake activity showing up on the Dinsmore station, which is uh, just right outside of Eureka, some earthquake activity, very small stuff, um, but not showing up here on the USGS map uh, or the EMSC model. So uh, even though I've seen it showing up on the graph, uh, nothing being reported. Uh, typical movement down here in the Clear Lake volcanic field. It's been pretty active around the, uh, this region. 50 earthquakes over the last 24 hours with the... Uh, uh, operations that go on down there. Bay Area in California looks fairly quiet. We've got three earthquakes uh, being listed up here on the map. Looks like uh, some very low grade microquakes. Ridgecrest area, this is about the uh, only zone that has really seen a, a little bit of uptick. Um, looks like a 3.0 did come in earlier this evening. 
uh, 7.3 kilometers deep. This area, of course, did see that activity ramping up in, uh, uh, was it uh, 2019? I think it was when they had that uh, series of earthquakes down there. Aftershock activity can continue there uh, for quite a while. So um, continue to watch out for some aftershock movement. Uh, Southern California, uh, very spotty activity. We're not seeing any swarming, no major movement that I can see across the map here in Southern Cal. Most of the movement along the very active San Jacinto Fault Zone. Uh, Alaska, one of the active regions here over the last couple days, continues to show movement up here into the Gulf of Alaska. Uh, we did see this movement, uh, this 4.1 earthquake here early this morning. Uh, most of the activity been shooting up across the Cook Inlet area and as noted here across the uh, Gulf of Alaska. Into the Pacific, uh, one earthquake out here. Um, let's see here. We got a 3.2, 42 kilometers deep. Aside from that, most of the activity confined to the Pahala area with about 14 earthquakes measured in the last 24 hours. Uh, not a whole lot of movement shooting out west here across the Kuril Kamchaka. We got one earthquake, uh, 4.6 coming in early this morning. I think we had another one. Let me double check across the EMSC model here. Uh, there's the, well, there's a 5.0, 4.6. Looks like we're missing a couple earthquakes here at USGS. Uh, there is a 5.0 and some other earthquake activity. Look at that deep. Um, let me see here. Was that noted? That's going to be this earthquake right here. 498 kilometers for that 4.0 coming in today, just earlier this afternoon. Now, that is a portion of the Izu Trench. Uh, you can bet sometime tonight uh, before we do the update tomorrow morning that will, this activity will show some type of movement upstream if not uh not if not upstream then we'll look for adjustment over here along the western side of the plate uh just very typical uh but that's a deep super deep earthquake uh in that region another deep earthquake is over here uh something is definitely working its way uh, around the region this 4.5 412 kilometers deep uh, into the area of the Mediterranean. Let me see exactly where this was at. Italy area. Now, it's not uncommon to see deep earthquake activity. These darker circles here indicating historic earthquake activity since about 1900, uh, below 300 kilometers. So you can see here on the map that this region does see some deeper activity. Uh, but it's been a little while since I've seen that deep of an earthquake in this region here. Um, considering all the movement across Turkey and the Mediterranean area uh, and um, the Mongolia area over the past couple weeks. It's been very active. Uh, I mean, Romania, excuse me. Uh, got that. I don't, not for sure why I said Mongolia. I know exactly where that's at. That's way up north and east of here. Uh, but Romania, that's uh, where we've seen a little bit of activity here over the last week or so. Let me show you guys here this movement. I'll bring up, um, doo -doo -doo -doo. where am I? Okay. 30 days of activity up here in Romania, seeing a, a swarm of activity. This is just a, a little minor amount here USGS is showing, but they've definitely had a lot more in the last couple of weeks uh, below this threshold, but still a lot of activity, uh, including that 5.6 here uh, mid-month in February. Uh, but overall, seismic activity across this region, uh, you guessed it, it's been quite active. And what it's leading to, well, we've got to look at certain areas that may have not been hit uh, as far as larger scale activity goes um, across the Mediterranean region. Uh, let's go back here real quick and take a look. We're going to search the earthquake catalog book here. And we are going to go basically 6.5 and above. Uh, over the last, um, oh, let's see here. We're going to go about 1980 or so. Good year. I can't really remember that all too well, but 80s was a fun period. And we're just going to draw a rectangle out here on this map and kind of look at the historical seismic activity across the region and maybe look at some seismic gap zones that are, um, well, overdue for activity. Uh, if this is working, 
Let me see here. Custom search. I drew a rec rectangle. Okay, there we go. I forgot to click use this region. There we go. Huh, what's going on here? Oh, resize the rectangle using its anchors or reset the rectangle. Oh, I wonder what's going on. I wonder why. It should be working. That's a little on the odd side. They have been having some issues here uh, recently. So it's not going to let me. So we'll have to check that out. Um, maybe tomorrow sometime. We'll see what's going on. Normally it works perfectly fine. Uh, tonight <laughs> does not want me to see what's going on out there. At least historically. But we can find out. Uh, okay. All right. So at least today in this area... Uh, we had that deep earthquake activity off the coast of Italy. Turkey movement still shown uh, quite a bit of aftershock activity, although this is just 4.0 and above on the map. Uh, as you can see, there's quite a few twos and threes across this area. Um, also some movement going on uh, in the last couple minutes here. Uh, outside of France, a 3.1 coming in 10 kilometers deep. Has not been reviewed yet by a seismologist, though. So. Over here across eastern Afghanistan and um, regions of uh, this area. Quite a few fours and fives over the last 24 hours. The Java Trench still looks awfully quiet. Got to watch this area pretty closely. It's been building up some steam. Um, let me see what we got for the EMSC model here. Yeah, still lacking activity across a good portion of the Java Trench north. Got to watch this area. Uh, let's see here. Across the Maluka Sea and the Banda Sea, these all this area looking a little bit absent in earthquake activity today. It's been a hot spot of movement over the last 30 days or so, I would say. Uh, but things are kind of quieting down across this area now. Uh, a couple earthquakes to chat about down south. Uh, got a 3.5 coming into Australia. Uh, south Australia, 6 kilometers deep uh, this area definitely has seen a little bit of movement here um over the last uh while or so couple couple weeks i would say let me see if i can bring that well it's not going to show it but uh yeah australia definitely getting in on some activity here and there it's been a little spotty we've seen some movement down to the southwest up in the north over here to the northeast and now uh roughly about center portion but to the south here in australia 3.3 uh coming into north island new zealand area one of the more recent quakes uh this look, looks like it is along the southern end of the kermadec trench and uh, i believe that's from the emsc model usgs absent uh, on earthquake activity down there it did show a little bit of movement across papua new guinea today and a uh, deeper movement quake from last night, 5.6. We did have quite a few fours up here around the North Island, New Zealand area, but for whatever reason, they have disappeared. So, uh, and I'll show you what I mean here real quick. Let me go to the GeoNet servers uh, and check out, I think we can still check out these drums uh, from last night. Uh, well, they're mo most of them are gone, uh, but about this time last night, maybe a little bit earlier, uh, we've seen a, a pretty good uptick in fours and some threes up here. You can just see one of them um, barely showing up. But again, it's past almost past that 24-hour period. Um, again, I don't know what happened to them. I don't know why the EMSC or the USGS is showing them, but the GeoNet servers are. And uh, looking at this activity, or at least the last um, 24 hours of earthquake activity, Looks like things have calmed down in that region. There's not a whole lot of activity showing up here. Maybe one uh, further quake here a few hours ago. Uh, but I'm not seeing the uptick that we had seen last night, roughly about this time. Things looking a little bit calmer. Some activity down south here. Uh, let's see, when was that 3.3? That was at, well, that was at 9.35 p.m. my time. So, yeah, less than an hour ago. But again, that's way up north. 
uh, into the Kermadec Trench. I don't think it's going to show up up here. We'd have to check one of these northernmost um, stations, and uh, it just it doesn't look like it. Too small and too deep of an earthquake to show up here uh, across the New Zealand map. All right, uh, space weather activity. We did see uh, persisting solar storming here earlier, uh, mostly on the area um, when the, well, obviously when the Earth was uh, unlit on this side, Russia, Europe area. It's really kicking up again, G2 storming conditions. But now that we're, uh, well, we're here entering into the dark period on our side of the Earth, things have kind of mellowed out was kicking up here a little bit so i think we did see some movement or at least some uh a uh, little bit of uh, roars again across portions of alaska canada but um it looks like it's really starting to calm down a little bit um kp index still shows up there around the five range but um i think those are a little old let me check the live data and see look at that shot goodness imagine taking a flight somewhere at night and seeing that out your window that's definitely nice uh, looking at the solar wind stream this is live real-time solar wind stream notice the speed here has really dropped off uh, below the 700 range uh, density has also dropped off as well that's a proton density and the btbz component is stable uh, and that will block out any um, relative solar wind temperature is up there a little bit but it looks like we're past that uh, period of seeing any significant further amplification of the auroras uh, maybe unsettled here uh, throughout the remainder of the night but i think after that we are done uh, as far as the activity goes but either way it was pretty nice we'll continue to uh, report back on any new subsequent cmes and solar storms that may arise uh, we do have a pretty large coronal hole here number 81 notice that center disc uh, once that thing rotates into view, we could be looking at another uh, geomagnetic, geomagnetic storm watch here once that is into position here, center view of the Earth. But uh, for now, uh, things are probably going to drop off a little bit, but it was uh, nice to see some pictures out there of the auroras. Beautiful indeed. All right, sunspots. Uh, about ready to say goodbye to this one. It still looks fairly dynamic uh, in terms of maybe producing a flare, um, but it's been, it's been fairly quiet as far as uh, activity goes. Looks like, uh, and these guys are just saying 99% chance, 50% chance for an M flare, X flare at 15. Those are probably overrated. Uh, let me see what we got from the space weather site and see what they're reporting here um ju -ju -ju -ju. still looks like well speeds at 707 but we've seen the real time drop it off pretty drastically um ju -ju -ju. yeah it looks like right now these guys updated 2200 utc time so this was much much earlier they haven't really updated the most recent one uh but 50 percent chance for an m flare x class at 15 percent uh, but looking at these sunspots, they don't look uh, like they're going to harbor any major flare threat. And we do have uh, another region around here on the northeastern side of the sun, northeastern limb, that we're going to watch. It hasn't been named yet, but uh, it does have some beautiful features up here, as we can see. The magnetic lines uh, across the sunspot. We'll continue to watch that as it rotates in the view. Again, this is all leading up. Uh, towards the solar maximum potential here in 2025 around june we are already already way ahead of schedule here is the predicted sunspot uh, number in the red line this is going to be the current data let me see if i can zoom in here just a little bit um, so we are way up there in the number of sunspots that uh, 
was somewhat predicted or at least forecasted here for solar cycle 25. Again, that's going to peak out roughly about 2025 summertime. So way ahead on the sunspot number, also the solar um, flux progression, the energy that's being produced out here from the sunspots are way up there as well. Uh, so it could be a, you know, a rather interesting solar cycle. And uh, I think we'll get some good events here. Just got to be lined up uh, perfectly. The sun's awfully huge. Uh, so it's kind of like a hit and miss deal. Just got to be uh, perfectly lined up for uh, some significant solar events. As far as uh, us go on here, here on planet Earth. All right, uh, let's see what else we got here, folks. Let's check out weather real quick here for the West Coast. You know that storm system that caused all the havoc in Oklahoma City and Oklahoma in general yesterday is well over on the eastern side of the country already. Um, and there's another major threat coming to the uh, southern, uh, roughly about eastern Oklahoma, eastern Texas, and the south uh, very soon. We'll cover that a little bit later uh, tomorrow. Uh, there's a west coast next storm system coming in much needed rain and snow and uh, this is going to be the pattern it looks like as another system comes in behind that and it brings in a bunch of more a bunch more moisture and snow and that's uh it's just going to be a uh, looks like a very wet march for us out here um, in california i don't know what's after the second week of march but uh it looks like it could stay uh, fairly wet uh, across the area. Uh, looks like some areas of Northern Cal. Here, here's just uh, the coast range. They're looking probably six to nine inches or so. Uh, and that's just from here to um, March 16th. That's a lot of rainfall. We've already seen a lot, but uh, not going to complain about it. Here in the Sacramento Valley, we're looking at probably another... Uh, between two to five inches over the next couple weeks and up in the mountains these are going to be some impressive snowfall rates um, that are going to be taking place up there so we should be set for the winter or the uh, summer i mean in terms of the reservoirs and whatnot uh, definitely need it let me tell you it's been uh been a couple dry years for us out here along the west coast all right folks um i think that's about it um just got to look at these regions that really haven't been hit I, you know i want to kind of point this deep earthquake out uh tomorrow morning in the uh update i'm pretty certain that we should see some subsequent uh activity upstream deeper movement tends to happen it tends to happen that way when we see deeper activity that's just one region but also deep, the uh, deeper activity over here taking place uh just off the coast of italy should add further strain up along these plate boundaries right here. So we'll continue to watch that. We're already seeing a little bit of movement um, up there in France uh, and the area just to the northeast. So continue to watch that region pretty closely. I hope everyone has a good night. Uh, I'll catch you guys back here uh, probably sometime tomorrow, I'm guessing. Right? Unless we get something major and it kind of shakes me up out of bed. But... Probably not going to happen, but you never know. Living out here in California, it's just one of those things. All right, folks, uh, have a good night. Stay safe out there, and we will chat you guys uh, again very soon.